Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully resolve if you're receiving an inaccessible boot device error on your Windows computer. So this should be a fairly quick tutorial and we're going to jump right into it. So the first thing I'd recommend you guys do is try and get into the troubleshooting options. And this will also depend on what state your computer is currently in. If you can boot into Windows, like you can get into the desktop, I would recommend that you restart your computer. So just like you normally would, open up the start menu, left click on restart. While your computer is restarting, or actually right after you left click on the restart button, you want to be holding down the shift key on your keyboard. It'll load a menu that looks like this. And that's how I currently got to the menu I'm at. The reason why I didn't show that in this video is I don't want to confuse the people that are coming from other issues that I'm about to get into. So the second issue would be if you're unable to boot into Windows at all. At that point, I would recommend that you download the Windows 10 Media Creation Utility and you boot your computer off of that. You would have to burn it to a DVD or a bootable USB flash drive. And there are different recovery options in there as well. And we'll go through a couple of them in this video as well. And then the last option is that you're able to get into the troubleshooting options through the Windows OS. So as your computer is booting up, there might say launching automatic repair. If you do a hard power off three times in a row, it should load the automatic repair utility, which is basically will lead you to this screen or a screen that will look very similar to this and it will be identical once I click on the troubleshoot button right here. So those are basically the three different types of issues you guys could be having. And I should note that if your computer is unable to boot from a DVD or a USB flash drive, there is something that's really wrong with your device, and that's not going to be covered in this video. But that should really be an outlier for most of the issues that are going to be going over in this video. So without further ado, let's go underneath Choose an Option. If you have the screen that looks like this, you want to go underneath Troubleshoot, which will reset your PC or see Advanced Options. Now at this point, if you were using a USB flash drive or DVD and you booted your Windows 10 ISO file from it, the screen should look very familiar. And it should say reset this PC up at the top. I recommend using this as a last or a later resort. And this will basically give you the option to reinstall Windows and preserve some files. Or do a clean refresh reinstall of the Windows operating system. So it's definitely an option and I would definitely consider exploring that if we've exhausted a few other scenarios I want to go through in this video. So I'm going to go underneath advanced options here. And now we have, as you can see, more options. There's a system restore option that says use restore point record on your PC to restore Windows. Now if you have not recently installed any new hardware, I'd recommend going underneath system restore and then if you have any restore points saved on your computer, I recommend going back to those restore points that you received. Again, that's if you have this case where you recently have not installed any new hardware. If you have installed new hardware, this tutorial or this section of the tutorial is really not going to apply for you. But for most people, I would definitely suggest checking out the system restore first. And I don't believe I have any restore points saved on this device, but we will proceed with this anyway just to see what we get. And we're going to go underneath our administrator account. You want to insert your password if you're prompted. And like I said, there are no restore points saved, but if there were, I'd recommend going back to the most recently created one and then proceeding to left clicking on next here. However, since that's not an option, I'm going to go back underneath choose an option, go back to troubleshoot, go underneath advanced options again. And now there are a whole bunch of different things we can try here. And I would even recommend trying startup repair, which will just be pretty automated. I'd recommend trying that next to see if that will help fix problems that are keeping Windows from loading. So definitely try that one. And now I actually want to get into safe mode here, and that'll be another part of the video. So we're going to go underneath startup settings. And since I don't believe I'm going to be coming back to the screen, I do want to also address so you can roll back to a previous version or a previous build of Windows 10. So you can select that one as well. 
And if you had any system images backed up to a CD or DVD, you could restore them right through here. So I just wanted to put out these other options here before we just move on because they're all very good. And there are plenty of commands you can run up here as well. So if you had any specific errors, you could always run the command prompt and see if I've maybe made a video in the past regarding your specific error. So I just want to put that out there. But I'm going to go underneath Startup Settings. And then I'm going to left click on Restart. And this will be able to get me into safe mode, hopefully. And that's what we're going to be doing here. If you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8, you might just be tapping on the Escape key as your computer is booting up. And then you would just go underneath Advanced Boot Options and then Safe Mode with Networking. However, Windows 10 is a little bit different. So as we can see, we have to use our function keys to make our selection because it says use number keys or function keys. I'm going to select F. 5 in my case to enable safe mode networking. You can select another one if it's more applicable to you guys, but I would recommend if you have the ability to load network drivers that you do so because it can definitely be useful. Okay, so at this point you're going to have to enter your computer password here. And now there are a few things I'd recommend you guys try. So if you have any new or recently added hardware, software, drivers, or similar things, I'd recommend you guys uninstall them from your computer. So if you have any new programs maybe you installed as well, I'd recommend uninstalling them as well. And now once you've done that, if you have any USB devices that are in your computer, I'd recommend disconnecting them and then reconnecting them and seeing if that resolves your issue as well. And once you've done that and exhausted those options, now comes what I think should really be able to fix your computer. And that would be to run a couple commands. So I'm actually going to put this in a notepad file right here because it basically it's pretty self-explanatory once you start running the commands. I don't feel the need to actually run and wait for them to run because both of these scans could take up to an hour to two hours for both scans or perhaps even longer. So I just want to put that out there. But the first one you run to run would be a check disk or a disk integrity scan. So run a chk dsk space forward slash f another space and then forward slash R. That will be the first one we're going to run into command line window. And the next one would be an SFC scan now. So you would do SFC space forward slash scan now. Scan now should be all one word. And if you are unsure how to open up an elevated command line window, it's very easy to do. Just open up the start menu and type in command prompt. Best match should say command prompt directly above desktop app. You want to right click on that and then left click on run as administrator. And now that you have administrator rights, I'd recommend that you just copy this in or just type it into the command line window. And if you're unsure how to copy, you just copy as you normally would. And then up at the top bar here, you right click, left click on edit, then paste. And then I just would hit enter and it would begin running the scan. And now I should note if you're looking to run a check disk scan you are going to have to restart your computer so you're going to have to type the Y key on your keyboard 
and then restart your computer for the scan to begin. I just want to put that out there because some of these scans cannot run if your computer and your operating system is currently in use because it has a hard time scanning the drive if you're using the drive. So you just would type Y here. You'd hit enter on your keyboard and then it would say the volume will be checked the next time your system restarts. Let your system restart and then it would be a similar procedure for the SFC scan now. You just would get back into the same utility we we're in right now. So again, it's pretty straightforward and easy to follow. And once you have run this command, it should be pretty straightforward. I don't really need to explain to you what's going to be coming up on the screen. But I do hope this brief video was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you for watching this brief tutorial. And I look forward to catching you all in the next video. Goodbye.